launch coasters, inverted coasters, and VR coasters. I'm Royal Coaster David, and this is Coasting Into Fantasia Land. This January, we decided to kick off the new decade with a trip to one of the best parks in the world, Fantasia Land. This park's located near Cologne in Germany and has a fantastic selection of well themed coasters, highlighted by Taran and Black Mamba. Later in the year, it should hopefully open a new section of the park called Rookburg, with at least one new coaster in it called Fly. We visited at the end of the Wintertraum event, and whilst it was a bit chilly, we had a great time and it made for a fun start to the coaster year of 2020. So today I'm here at the absolutely amazing Fantasia Land for the winter event. It's awesome. Now, I usually try and do trips as inexpensively as possible, but because we were able to get some incredibly cheap flights, and it would be the first trip of the new year, we decided to splurge a little and stay at one of the park's amazing on-site hotels. The one we picked was Matamba, which is an African theme, and we arrived late in the afternoon so we could make the most of our stay. From the outside, the hotel looks great, but it's when you go inside that it really strikes you the work that's gone into this place. The rooms look fantastic too, and really offer you a unique stay unlike anywhere else I've been. So I don't usually go for fancy hotels, but Matamba is amazing. After checking in, we went to the first of the hotel bars, Jafari, which actually had some coaster-themed cocktails. Naturally, I had one called Black Mamba. So this is the Black Mamba cocktail. <laughs> Let's see what it's like. It looks impressive. So I'm not really a cocktail person, but it's quite nice. And it's coaster themed, so that's all better. You got the uh, passion. 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 Safari passion, and it is amazing. Very sweet. After finishing our drinks, we had a wander into the hotel's garden before going for dinner at the African-themed barbecue restaurant called Zambezi. The food was delicious, and they had a grill where you could get some exotic meats such as crocodile, zebra, barramundi, ostrich, along with your more typical beef. After dinner, we had to look around the park's other hotel, Ling Bao, which was just as impressive as Matamba. We had a couple of beers in the Lee River Bar and explored the park's garden before heading to the real highlight of the two hotels, the Dragon Bar. This was located on the top floor of the Lingbao Hotel and had an outside viewing deck which gives a great view of the park. The bar itself is split over two floors, with a giant dragon filling the space in the middle. It looks brilliant and was a great place to relax in the evening and have a few drinks while planning some trips for the rest of the year. The next morning, after a tasty breakfast back in the Zambezi restaurant, we headed into the park to make use of one of the hotel's other benefits, early entry to the Klugheim area and an hour riding Rake and Taran before the general public are allowed in the park. Taran is definitely the highlight here and is simply a phenomenal coaster. It really has to be one of the best looking rides out there too. This record-breaking multi-launch Intamin Blitz coaster is one of my favourites in Europe and a couple of my friends actually have it as their number one. The way it weaves around the Klukheim area, diving in and out of trenches and tunnels and interacting wonderfully with the rock work is something that looks amazing and the ride's a really good mix of forces and speed too. The first launch has a decent kick to it before you hit a turnaround and get a pop of airtime as the coaster dives back downwards. There's a few more pops of airtime and some really fun rapid transitions but my favourite part of the ride has to be that second launch. Just as you feel the train starting to slow down a bit after the first section of the ride, the second launch kicks in and it feels like someone just presses a hyperspeed button and you're blasted forward at incredible speed. The sensation of speed is heightened further by the launch being in a trench so the walls fly past you in a blur before you pull up and continue into this wonderful twisty layout. I'd say the second half of the ride is the more intense of the two and I remember when I first rode it feeling as if the ride was trying to throw you off it as it speeds through all these twists and dives. The way the track wraps around itself and the scenery is really remarkable, and the fact that it crosses over itself more than a hundred times gives you an idea of just how insanely twisty this ride is. Another great thing about the ride is its capacity, running up to four trains at the same time with separate load and unload stations, it allows the queue to move quickly even on busy days. It's a great coaster to watch too while you're queuing for it, and another thing that makes the coaster stand out is its amazing orchestral soundtrack. The way the music swells and flows really adds to the atmosphere of the ride and surrounding area, making it seem all the more epic. There's also a small family boomerang coaster in the same area as Taran called Rake, which provides a nice place to start from if you're not feeling quite brave enough for the bigger ride. I really feel that the opening of this section of the park marked a new era for Fantasia Land and cemented its place as one of the top must-visit parks in the world. 
I actually visited it before Taran was built, and whilst the Wild West themed area it replaced was decent, the unique fantasy look and wonderful twisty coaster are a huge improvement. It really sets a high bar for quality, one that I expect the park will continue to meet when the new Rookburg section of the park opens. Taran isn't the only notable coaster at the park though, as it also has one of my favourite mine train coasters, Colorado. When I first visited the park, it was actually carrying the subtitle of the Michael Jackson Thrill Ride, which didn't really age all that well, and so these days it's just known as Colorado. I think that it's a really good example of what a runaway mine train should be like, featuring a long ride time provided by three lift hills and a fun but not overly intense layout. It also features an indoor section in the dark, which adds a bit of variety, and overall, the ride is just great fun. It may feel a little out of place now that the Wild West area of the park is gone, and the theming just isn't quite up to the standard of the more modern areas of the park, but I still really enjoy this ride, and in my opinion, it's second only to Hong Kong Disneyland as far as mine train coasters go. New to the park since my last visit was Crazy Bat's VR Coaster. This added VR headsets to the old Temple of the Nighthawk ride, themed to the Bat characters from the Monster Family films. Weirdly, this was actually the second coaster I've ridden themed to this IP, as during a visit to Europa Park, there was a VR version of the Pegasus family coaster that had the same characters. Crazy Bats was actually better than I was expecting, and probably one of the best implementations of VR on a coaster. The long ride time allowed for a few interesting scenes, and the VR kept up a smooth frame rate and synchronised well with the layout of the track. I'm still not a big fan of VR on coasters, as it's a novel idea but slows down the loading time so much and leads to really long queues. Even running with German efficiency, the wait for this ride was the longest of any we queued for that day. This wasn't helped by the park only loading the middle of the trains, although I suspect that's due to the length of them, as it would probably push the VR out of sync with the track if ridden at the front or the back. Nearby the Crazy Bats coaster is another really unique ride, Wingers. This Maurer spinning coaster has two different tracks, one named Fear and the other Force. It's also got some really unusual elements too. Both sides of the ride start with an elevator style lift that takes you vertically upwards and tilts the track gently forwards before you're released into the first drop. Further on in the ride, there's a section where the trains come to a stop and then do something weird. On one side the track tilts up like a seesaw before the train's released and continues onward, and on the other side the track actually breaks away and tilts to the side. It's really quite weird. At the end there's also a strange bounce section, where the track suddenly drops down and back up again. It's really quite a strange ride, but good fun nonetheless. These trick track sections also make the ride a must do for enthusiasts looking to experience something unique and a bit different. The final noteworthy coaster is Black Mamba, my favourite inverted coaster. In my opinion, inverted coasters are at their best when they stay close to the ground, as it heightens the speed sensation as the ground rushes past your feet. Just like Nemesis, which I suspect inspired this ride, Black Mamba does this brilliantly, staying low down in trenches and tunnels, making it feel incredibly fast. The ride is really well paced too, and doesn't let up until the very end, when you turn a corner into pitch darkness as the ride hits the brakes. It's also really nicely themed too, with a unique African look, and it probably has the best themed lift hill of any coaster in the world. If you can, I'd highly recommend riding this one in the front, as the speed rush is simply amazing. It may be a bit more forceful in the back, but for me, the front is the best place to experience this incredible coaster. Coasters aren't the only thing at Fantasialand though, there's a couple of flat rides and dark rides, as well as a log flume and rapids ride, which is brilliant, but remains closed during winter, as Germany is cold and you do get rather wet on it. Heading up the flat rides is Talokan, a wonderfully themed topspin with awesome fire and water effects. I'm not raking on topspins personally, but if you like this kind of ride, it's a must do, although you might need to ride it more than once in order to get the front facing side, and experience all the effects properly, as the side that faces the wall isn't anywhere near as good. There's also Mystery Castle, a huge indoor drop tower that has a really fast upwards lift that almost feels like a launch. The ride's themed to some mad scientist's experiment, and because it's indoors, it allows the drop to happen in complete darkness. It's not the tallest drop tower in the world, but the theming makes it one of the best, and I'd really recommend riding it even if you aren't usually a fan of drop towers. You may even want to ride it more than once, as it operates with several different ride cycles, meaning you're never entirely sure what's going to happen next. On the dark ride side of things, there's Hollywood Tour, which I actually managed to miss on my first visit to the park, as the entrance isn't very well marked. It's a river cave sort of ride, going through different movie themes, but by modern standards, it's kind of dated and doesn't really fit with what the park is trying to be these days. As such, I suspect its days may well be numbered. 
Another kind of dated ride is Geister Rickshaw, which is a kind of strange ghost train with a Chinese theme. It has a couple of decent scenes in it though, and never as much of a queue, so it's worth checking out if you need a break from the coasters. The only modern dark ride they have is Mouse au Chocolat, which uses the same ride system as Toy Story Midway Mayhem at Disney Parks. It takes place in a chocolatier's kitchen where you're tasked with shooting lots of pesky mice with a gun that shoots icing. It's a fun family ride, although it can end up with quite a long queue during the day. It's during the night, however, that I think Fantasialand is at its best. Night rides in Taran are breathtaking, with the launch sections having a fiery orange glow to them, and there's even smoke effects to enhance things further. The way the rockwork is lit also looks stunning, and the whole area just has this magical atmosphere. The rest of the park also looks amazing at night, and made us feel really quite festive with all the Christmas trees that were there, although that may have been more to do with the mulled wine that was available throughout the park. Overall, Fantasialand is a wonderful park with world-class rides and theming to match. It's one of my favourite parks to visit, and if you can stretch to staying at one of the hotels, I'd highly recommend that too, although they are rather pricey. There's a good chance I'll be going back later in the year, when the new launched flying coaster and Rookburg section of the park hopefully open, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the video I'll make afterwards. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look at Fantasialand. For now, I've been Rollercoaster David, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again in another video very soon.